Okay, so I don't think that most math textbooks really explain how to solve these type of equations. Now, some of you might be looking at this equation and saying, what are you talking about? I can solve this equation. Well, not so quick. There is a critical aspect to be able to solve an equation like this in algebra. And again, most students don't understand this well enough. And that's going to cause maybe up to 90% of you to not uh, really get the full solution or solve this problem correctly. I know that sounds shocking because a lot of you are going to look at this problem and say, nah, this is no big deal. I can solve uh, this equation. Well, hopefully you can. So if you want to go ahead and give it a try, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer here in just one second, and then I'm going to walk through uh, exactly how to solve these type of equations in algebra. And I'm going to emphasize this critical point which in my experience is really not uh, emphasized strongly enough, and it is the key to be able to solve these type of equations. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and uh, I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so just to be clear, we have three minus the square root of two m plus two is equal to eight. We would refer to this type of equation in, uh, in algebra as a radical equation. And if you're studying any sort of math course that involves algebra, you uh, absolutely must know how to solve these type of equations. So this is an important little video. Let's go and take a look at the answer. So we're solving for the variable m. What is m equal to? Well, the answer is null, okay? And you might be like, uh, you know, what is this guy talking about null? I don't even know what that means. Well, effectively, when you have null as your answer, it just means that there is no solutions to this equation, okay? So that could, uh, definitely can happen. Of course, we'll talk about uh, this in a second. But if you got this right, that is super impressive. Matter of fact, uh, I don't typically do this. I'm going to give you a nice little happy face. I'm going to give you A++++. Plus, 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 uh, and I'm probably going to give you like a 200% multiple stars. And if you were in my uh, math class, I would just say, you know what, just go home. Uh, take the rest of the year off. I'll send you your A++++ plus, plus, plus in the mail. But uh, that is fantastic. That really shows that you know what you're doing when it comes to solving radical equations. This is an extremely important uh, topic because we're going to have to talk about something called extraneous roots. And that's really what you demonstrated to me, that if you um, understood that the uh, solution here is null, that means that you understand uh, extraneous roots, and what they are, and how to uh, check for them. And that is really the big part here is how do you check for extraneous roots? Some of you might be like, I am totally uh, lost. No problem. Let's get into the problem right now. Okay. All right. So here's the equation. And again, we're dealing with a radical equation. We would not re refer to this as a square root equation. This little square root symbol is a radical in mathematics. So effectively, what we need to do is to isolate the radical on one side of the equation and move all the numbers to the other side. So let's go ahead and just walk through the process. Pretty straightforward stuff. So here is my three. Uh, so let's get the th uh, let's subtract three from both sides of the equation. And when I do that, I uh, have my radical right here. My square root of two m plus two is equal to eight minus three, which is five. Okay. Hopefully, uh, you know most of you are like, yep, yeah, that's correct. And uh, I bet uh, most of you out there as well probably did a lot of this work correct okay so i think that is the case but there is this one particular part of this problem that really confuses a lot of students and that's kind of uh, what i'm driving at okay so now that we have this uh square root isolated this radical isolated we want to do what well what we want to do is square both sides okay so that's what you want to do when you have let's just take a look at a very simple example if I have the square root of x is equal to 4, to get rid of the square root, because I'm trying to solve for x, just go ahead and square both sides. Okay, So that's what we're going to do uh, next. 
And again, a lot of you are like, yes, yes, Mr. YouTube Math Man, this is what I did. I don't see what the problem is. Well, hold on, be a little bit patient. So we're going to square both sides here. And when we do that, uh, we get to drop this uh, radical, this square root. And of course, 5 squared is 25. Okay, so we're looking pretty good. So now uh, what we want to do is continue to solve for m. We have this lovely linear equation. So I'm going to subtract uh, 2 from both sides. And uh, what do we got here? We have 2m is equal to 23. And then to solve for m, all I have to do is divide both sides of the equation by 2. And I get m is equal to 23 over 2. Now, right now, at this moment, there's so many of you are like, hey, uh, that's the answer I got. You know, why did you uh, give me an F on this quiz? Well, listen, hold on one second. Let's just kind of discuss this real quick. Now, if you got this, that's very, very good. Okay. However, what did we just do? Well, this is simply a candidate. This is a possible solution. We don't know if, indeed, uh, this is the actual solution to this equation. Okay, it's a potential solution, and it could be what we call an extraneous solution. Okay, now what is an extraneous solution? That's like an extra solution, and that can definitely happen in algebra. So the only way to uh, kind of verify whether, in fact, this is a solution or not, we must plug this in. Now, some of you are saying, hey, I did that, Mr. YouTube Math Man, and, uh, you know, this thing worked out. Well, hold on one second. Again, you may have, uh, you know, made this one very, very common error. So I'll get to all that. I know I'm kind of building it up. But let's just talk about extraneous solutions and, um, again, what they are. So here... Uh, we have this potential solution, m is equal to 23 over 2. So we're going to plug it in. Uh, we're going to replace this m with this value. And then we're going to check to see whether, in fact, uh, this is true or not. Okay, This is the, what we call checking for extraneous solutions. Now, what is an extraneous solution? Well, let me go ahead and explain that to you in just one quick second. After you hit that subscribe button, that notification bell, you have no idea of the positive impact this has on my YouTube channel. Okay, If you're getting any sort of value out of this, uh, this little tiny micro act just goes a long, long way for me. And uh, for those of you that do subscribe, I kind of th think of you as my own math student. You know, I'm basically, I'm trying to expand my virtual math classroom uh, because I just love teaching math and I really try to teach math in a non-textbooky kind of way clear and understandable, okay? Because unfortunately, math can be taught in an overly technical manner and it confuses a lot of students and that's why a lot of people struggle in math, okay? But if you can hit that subscribe button, I would be very, very happy indeed. Okay, let's go back to this quick concept of extraneous uh, solutions, okay? What does that mean, extraneous? Well, that means extra. Let me explain this over here real quick. Uh, we'll do it right here. Okay, so right in here, let me just talk about what extraneous solutions are. Let's take an equation like x is equal to 2. x is equal to 2, no problem. Uh, so what is the um, answer here? Okay, well, it's like this is the easiest equation in the world to solve uh, x is equal to 2, right? Well, what happens if I square both sides? Okay, well, let's square both sides. And that's what we did over here. And remember to drop that square root. Now I have x squared is equal to 4. Okay. All right. So I just squared both sides and now I have the equation x squared is equal to 4. So let's solve this equation. Well, here, uh, to solve this equation, this is a quadratic equation. I need to take the square root of both sides. But to solve a quadratic equation, uh, I'm going to have two solutions. x is equal to both positive and negative 2. Now remember, my original solution here was x is equal to 2. And when I square both sides, we got x squared is equal to 4. And then I solved that equation, I got x is equal to positive and negative 2. Well, if I go to check these equations, both a positive and negative 2, well, the positive works here, right? 2 is equal to 2, but negative 2 is not equal to 2. So this negative 2 is what we call an extraneous solution. Okay, so this absolutely can happen. And this happens when we... Uh, multiply both sides of, uh, of an equation by a variable or square both sides and whatnot. So this is critical, and you can't just kind of, uh, you know, you say, well, no, I don't think my, uh, you know, answer is extraneous. I think it's correct. No, you don't know. We have to check this, and that's what we're going to do now. Okay, so let's get into this. So we're going to plug in 
for m this is 23 over 2 and there is you know the, some of you are like okay i understand this well you'll there's a part of kind of the the main point of this video is coming up so it's just uh, stick with me here all right so let's go ahead and start simplifying this so we have um, 2 times 23 over 2. I can cross cancel these 2's. That leaves me with 23 uh, or th uh, 3 minus the square root of 23 plus 2. And right here you're like, yep, this works out nicely. 23 plus 2 is 25. So now we have to uh, figure this out. 3 minus the square root of 25 is all this equal to 8. If it is not, then this solution is false. It's extraneous. If, it, uh, if this is true, then in fact, that is the solution. So now let's go and figure out what the square root of 25 is. Okay, so this is the big, big part of this little uh, video here. Now, when you're checking extraneous solutions, you're gonna uh, likely end up taking the square root of a number, okay, uh, in radical equations, okay, when you're checking. Now. Uh, unlike a situation like x squared is equal to 25, this is a quadratic equation. Yes, indeed, when you take the square root of both sides, you're going to take the positive and negative of that number. In other words, x is going to be equal to positive and negative 5 because positive 5 times positive 5 is 25, and negative 5 times negative 5 is also positive 25. So a lot of students, uh, they you know think to themselves, oh, yes, I need to um, you know consider both the positive and negative uh, roots uh, when I'm checking for an extraneous solution. But that is not the case. That is not the case. You're going to be using only the principal square root, which is the positive version, not the negative. Okay. So this is a, uh, this, you know, of course, I've been teaching math for decades. I collect math books. I have hundreds and hundreds. I just love math books, you know, uh, and I have math books from the 60s. I think I have some from the 50s as well, 70s, 80s, da 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 da. And some books stress this point enough, but uh, it's really kind of, I guess it's kind of implied by these math textbooks um, that students just, uh, you know, to just to use the principal square root. Now, of course, your teachers out there hopefully can emphasize this, but when we're taking the square root of 25, we're only going to uh, use 5, not negative 5, because we d if we did use negative 5, you'll see that this, you know, can conf uh, confuse students. Some, you know, it would be like what? Well, 3 minus the square root of 25. If that's negative 5, is that equal to 8? Well, 3 minus minus 5 is 3 plus 5. That is, in fact, equal to 8. So some of you might be saying, no, this answer is right. My solution's good. No, I understand uh, how disappointed you are because it's, again, not clear enough. So let's go ahead and take the principal square root, which, of course, is 5. And now let's go ahead and see what happens. Okay, so Square root of 25, we're going to look at the principal square root, which of course is 5. And now we have 3 minus 5, which of course is negative 2. That is not equal to 8. Therefore, we must throw our solution, uh, uh, what we got here, um, out the door. It's extraneous. So there is no other solutions to check. Therefore, the answer to this uh, radical equation is null. There is no solution. Okay, but uh, if indeed, if you got to this point, if you were able to uh, get it to m is equal to 23 over 2, and if you did, you know, start checking this, that's very, very good. Okay, uh, really what um, confuses most students, again, is they don't know whether they should use both the positive and negative uh, versions of that square root when they're checking for extraneous solutions. So, you know, all this stuff that I'm telling you, you know, comes from experience. I've made all the mistakes. I've seen all the mistakes. You know, it's, you know, there's a lot of things I can't do. But uh, you know, one thing I can do pretty well is mathematics. It's just because I've been doing it for such a long time, and you know, you you learn, you know, what works and what needs to be emphasized. Or right? that's the value of getting clear and understandable, experienced instruction. And that's what I'm trying to deliver to you. So if you like watch this video, if you're still listening now, and you understand what I'm saying you are really going to dramatically improve your probability of getting these radical equations correct in um, algebra courses and beyond. This is important stuff, and uh, this is an area that a lot of students struggle in. Okay, so if you need more help with this level of mathematics, you want to check out like my Algebra 1, Algebra 2, maybe even my pre-calculus courses. Now, I'll leave links to those in the description of this video. Also, I have a ton of additional videos 
on this material on my YouTube channel as well. But uh, with, that, uh, with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.